what your cocktails have seen from oh, no. <laughs> All right, let me see if I can get in the middle here. Okay. So why is it no other doctors are using the MGB? One of the big fears they talk about is, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, all of your patients, Dr. Rutledge, are going to suffer from what they call bile reflux. And it's a little bit subtle because there's bile reflux and there's bile reflux, and then there's acid reflux and there's acid ulcers, and you can have some bile with an acid ulcer. So I thought we'd talk about that a little bit, and we have a great example of, of why we kind of give some tips and pointers and so it's a little bit complicated and let's talk a little bit about it. Bile is a normal part of your digestive process. It's a detergent and helps you digest and absorb fat. And so it's a really critical part of your gut. Um, but it's a powerful detergent. And if it gets up into the stomach, particularly gets up in the esophagus or above, back in the back of your throat or in your nose or down in your lungs, then it's like having detergent soap detergent in the back of your throat, in your eyes, in your nose, everywhere. It's awful. It burns and hurts. Now in a normal person, bile refluxes back and forth all the time, but only a small amount. So bile is in the duodenum, the first part of the gut, and during the day, if you measure it, bile goes back and forth. If you do a Roux and Y gastric bypass, a little bit less bile goes back and forth into the stomach pouch. And if you do a Bill Roth II type loop connection like the mini gastric bypass, more bile goes back into the stomach. But as we see in our 6,000 patients, that usually is no big deal. In other words, a little bile, a little of the digestive fluid goes up into the stomach every day, a little bit more than normal, but it's usually not a big deal. In fact, you can join our mailing list and talk to thousands of my patients and the majority are just having a good day. They're not having any problem from the fact that a little bit of bile washes back and forth on the way from the top of the gut down to the bottom. So thousands of my patients every day get up and have breakfast and eat and bile goes downstream and they have lunch and bile goes downstream and they have dinner and bile goes downstream and we don't see any problem from it. Other doctors are frightened that, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, bile is going to be constantly coming up and burning and causing problems, and we just don't see it very often. But because we don't see it very often does not mean that we never see it. So I did that with double negatives, so I'd like to do that again. We do sometimes see bile refluxing in certain situations, and we want to tell you about it to beware and know how to treat it. If that detergent bile goes downstream every day, then you're fine. If it hits the area where the stomach is connected and your stomach squeezes and squirts that container of detergent up into the back of your throat and your nose, ugh, then that's awful. And so the question arises, why is it 6,000 people, dozens of times a day, the bile is going downstream and not bothering anybody, but every once in a while going upstream and bothering somebody terribly? What is different? What has changed? And how can we protect you against that? And to explain that, I want to tell you about two things two stories I would like you to imagine in your mind with me now to come back to explain why the bile sometimes goes up into the back of your throat. So for our first thought experiment, I want you to imagine that it's a hot summer day and you go out, you mow the front lawn, you come back, it's 100 degrees, hot and sweaty, and somebody has made a big pitcher of icy cold fresh squeezed tart lemonade. I mean, big chunks of lemon are in there, it's squeezed in there, and you pour that out into one of those big, big, heavy glasses, and you just drink that down. Can you imagine that? That story. Okay, now imagine that story done all over again, this time that you have a big cold sore, and that lemonade hits that, ow, 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 okay? almost a spasm in your face and everything. Okay, keep that in mind. 
Now, I want you to imagine another thought experiment. Remember, this is imaginary. Look under your chairs now, in your mind, and this is like Oprah. We're all going to Hawaii! Yeah. Free! Right! Yeah. <laughs> and so we all go to Hawaii. It's free from Dr. Rutledge to all of you who are being here on Thanksgiving. We're going to have a, a, a gift. And we're all going to Thanksgiving. We get into our hotel. We get changed into our bathing suits. We say, hey, come on, we're all going down to the... Vitamin D party? Uh oh, we're going... <laughs> and in fact, as we're going, I'm talking about vitamin D. And you guys are all bunched up trying to listen. And we walk into that ocean water. It's just wonderful, right? Now, replay that. But as we're walking, we're going down through over the lava rocks. And I'm talking, not paying attention. I fall, and you all are so close, we all fall, and we're all legs, hands, all totally cut up from the lava rocks. And now walk into the salty ocean water. Ooh. Ouch. Ouch. Okay. Lemonade with a cold sore. Ow. Salt water. Lemonade and salt water by themselves are fine inside of you, but not once they're beneath a cut or in an ulcer. Now take bile detergent that's going downstream every day and imagine it hits an area of the connection and there's an ulcer there. A raw, eroded, open area where you've got a peptic ulcer. That detergent hits that, squirt, and all of a sudden it spasms and bile comes back up. So if the stomach connection is irritated by a big mug of coffee, uh, by eating too much and rubbing it, or you get gastritis and an ulcer, you've had soda pop, you've had coffee, you've had an aspirin, you've had alcohol, you've had cigarettes, then you get an ulcer there, then the bile, which is normally on its way downstream, hits that, just like the lemonade in the cold sore, and the stomach itself contracts, just like you pull the trigger on a squirt gun, and up comes that bile. So, to avoid that, a couple of things. One, don't eat right before you lay down at night. Eat smaller amounts. Coffee and other irritating things like aspirin that could cause an ulcer are likely to set that off. And if you have that and it continues other than just one evening, call me because we probably have to treat an ulcer that's inside of you. Didn't you say that having the orange juice every morning is your little insurance that you don't need? Absolutely. And so imagine, again, the lemonade or, in, 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 or orange juice, if you drink that every morning on an empty stomach, if you had an ulcer, you might feel the burning pain of that acid. And is it full strength orange juice, or do you, does it matter? Uh, yeah, whatever you want. Triple. I want triple X. But, but watered down orange juice, does that work or are you looking for that? Support? Well, there's no magic. There's no ma magic answer. The bottom line is you're looking in the morning to get some citrus. It doesn't have to be orange juice. It doesn't have to be a certain strength. It's just what you're trying to say to yourself is, I understand that one of the primary complications of Dr. Rutledge's surgery is an ulcer. And I also know if you pour acidy, burny, kind of liquids on an ulcer, it may tell you that you've got an ulcer, which might not be so obvious if you had a yogurt, which is nice and soothing. So we're saying most mornings, every morning for the rest of your life, have a big glass of orange juice. That citrate is good because if it burns like the lemonade in our previous thought experiment, it tells you you've got a cold sore. Now probably you didn't need to be told that, but your stomach can have trouble communicating exactly what's going on. If you drink on an empty stomach a big glass of lemonade, grapefruit juice, or orange juice, very concentrated, medium concentrated, <coughs> not so concentrated, and it burns, call me and yell at me. You blockhead, I've got an ulcer from your surgery and I want you to fix it. You get also the reflux if you're eating and drinking at the same time late at night. Well, I would put that a little differently. <clears throat> yes, if you're drinking and eating too much. Again, a little baby spoonful, a little baby nibble, and a long time in between, that will get you, that will get you through okay. If you have a lot or you have too much, that's where we have seen people get in trouble. So my bias is you can probably have a nibble at night to eat 
if you have a little spoonful of yogurt. You're almost certainly going to get in trouble if you eat a whole cup full of, of lo mein, a Chinese food at night. A oh, little. So wait half an hour for the drinking. Like you can't drink in between it. Like everything depends on volume. If you drink a whole bunch of coffee at night, it doesn't make any difference whether it was solid plus liquid. It's how much. If you take a quart of coffee, you got trouble. Whether you have solid with it or not. If you eat a whole big container of chow mein, even if you don't drink with that, you're probably going to have trouble. Now you might get lucky, but those things are going to set you up for problems. So instead, if you have a, a, a desire to have something to eat at night, tiny little bits, a little spoonful, yogurt is better than Chinese food, you know, there are certain things. Liquids a little bit better because they move through more quickly than solids. And wait in between bites. Give it time, because when you get that ball of food down there, that's when you can have trouble. Because it can irritate things and then the bile comes and then you got trouble. I have just a question. When does your system start working regularly um, as far as oh, all movements and all that? Um, well, you can have you can have a, a whole variation on adaptation depending on what you eat and how you eat and things like that. So, uh, I mean, the first couple of weeks because you're eating mostly liquids and varies. It, it varies. Okay. Totally variable. There's no there's no standard. So beware of the bile.